I know this looks like a lot, but we're going to split it all up onto nice individual pages like that. Um, so that's just all the questions we're going to be looking at. But let's begin. Question 2.1. Okay, so they give us a whole bunch of molecules. Now it says, is compound C saturated or unsaturated? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so saturated molecules only have single bonds between carbon atoms, whereas unsaturated have at least one double or triple bond between carbon atoms. So if we had to go look at this, we can see that it's got a CH3, then it's got a C, then it's got another C, then it's got a CH2, and then it's got a CH3. So the only, and obviously all of these lines are hydrogens, okay? So we can just fill that in if you want us to. Okay, so the only way that, because remember each carbon is supposed to be surrounded by at least four bonds. So the only way you could do that is to make that a triple bond. And now we can see that there is at least one double or triple bond between carbon atoms. And so this is definitely unsaturated. You could then say because it is an alk alkyne, or you could say because it has a triple bond between carbon atoms. Okay, this one. Write down the letter that represents a ester. Okay, so let me give you an example of an ester. An ester would be something like this one over here. Um, wait, let's go there and then there and then there. Okay, and then all of these would be hydrogens. So the way we know it's an ester is when it's got an oxygen somewhere in between two carbons like that. Okay, that makes it an ester. Now, the name of this one, for example, would have been, um, we always have an alcohol part, which would then be two carbons there, so that would be ethyl, and then the carboxylic acid part, because remember, an ester is a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, that would be propanoate. So esters end in the word eight. So here we can see there's something there, so that must be an ester, so that's D. Okay, this one says, what is a functional isomer of butanol? Okay, so butanol is an aldehyde. Aldehyde, how do I know that? Because aldehydes end in AL, and there you have AL. So, isomers, let's talk about it. With isomers, isomers have the same exact molecular formula, but look different structurally, but look different. That's not the formal definition, that's just Kevin's definition, okay? So now you get three types of isomers in grade 12. We get chain isomers, we get position, and we get functional. Okay, now with functional, remember we've got different functional groups. We've got alcohol functional groups, we've got, um, carboxylic acids, esters, aldehydes, ketones, you know, they all have different functional groups. So I've s explained this in other videos that in grade 12, the only functional isomers that we need to know about are ketones are always going to be functional isomers with aldehydes. And then carboxylic acids are always going to be functional isomers with esters. So because they've given us a aldehyde over here, then we need to look for a ketone on this table. Now a ketone, but the ketone must have four carbons because they must have the same um, amount of everything. So ketones have a carbon double bond oxygen in between two carbons. So there we have it, okay? And have a look here, there's four carbons. And so this is the answer. This is the ketone that we are looking for. And so there we go, it says write down the letter, so it's letter B. 
Now it says find a compound with the general formula. Now you need to know all of your general formulas and you need to know that that is for alkanes. So we need to go find an alkane. Alkanes are the most simple molecules we get. They literally just have carbons and hydrogens. They've got no double bonds, no, no triple bonds, okay? So it would literally just be this one over here. They've just drawn this one a bit weird, but you could actually just think of it as CH3. Then it goes to CH2. Then it goes to CH2. And then it goes to CH3. So we can see there's nothing funny here. There's no double bonds, no single bonds. And so that would be the answer. It would be A. Remember, guys, there are going to be more questions. There's quite a few questions still coming up. We've still got all of that. And we've still got that. Okay. Now it says uh, find a compound used as a reactant in the preparation of compound D. Ah, so compound D is an ester. And I did say it earlier. And we should know this by now that esters are always produced from a carboxylic acid, carboxylic, plus an alcohol. So it says find a compound, oh wait, find a compound that is used as a reactant. So it's actually just saying find a carboxylic acid or find, a or find an alcohol, but it has to be in the preparation of butyl propanoate. Now remember, in the naming of an ester, the first part is always the alcohol. So that's the alcohol. So it's butanol, and then this would be the carboxylic acid. That's propanoic acid. So it's a three carbon carboxylic. So I don't see any carboxylics on this table. There's no carboxylic there, 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 or there. So it must be an alcohol. So we're gonna look for a alcohol, which has an OH, but it must be a four carbon. And here it is, one, two, three, four carbons, and it's got the OH, so it's E writes down the structural formula of compound D. When they say structural formula, they actually just mean draw that thing out. So it's gonna have, um, it's an ester with four carbons for the, oh, that's not gonna fit there. Four carbons for the um, alcohol part, then three carbons for the carboxylic acid part. And then you must remember that with an ester, there's an oxygen in between the two parts. And then on the on this one, it's going to have an oxygen. So that you've got this unit. That part there is what makes it an ester. That C double bond oxygen with another oxygen. And then, of course, you need to go fill in all the hydrogens. Okay. Always making sure that carbon is always surrounded by four things. So I wouldn't put an ox I mean a hydrogen over here because this carbon already has one, two, three, four bonds. And so that would be the answer for that one. Okay, so we've done this one. Now it says name, what is the name of the functional group in E? Okay, so E is a alcohol. So your functional group is this part over here. We call that a hydroxyl group. So we call it a hydroxyl. Okay, so hydroxyl. What is the IUPAC name of the, oh, listen carefully, the position isomer of compound E? So position isomer, well, a position isomer means that they're going to take the functional group, which is this one, and they're going to change the position. So as we can see now, it's currently on position carbon number one. Now, the only other place you could add it would literally just be, um, you could just add it here onto carbon number two. Some of you say, yeah, but Kevin, why can't we just add it onto carbon three? You could, but then, then they're going to name it from, then they're going to, if it, if it was here, then they're going to name it from the left-hand side. And then it just becomes the exact same as if we had it from this side. So the only other alternative is that you put it on carbon number two. And so what would the name be? Well, if you have the OH on carbon number two, and then this becomes a normal hydrogen, then it's just going to be um, the longest carbon chain is BUT because it's butan. Okay. And then but we're just going to say BUT for now. And then do we have any branches? No, we don't. And so we're then going to say butan. And then on carbon number two, we have an alcohol. So we're going to say butan two whole. This one says, and remember guys, there are still more questions after this. So this one says, what is the structural formula? So they say, draw it out of the chain isomer of compound A. So let's quickly draw out compound A. I don't know why they've done it like that. We can just do it like that, like that, like that, and like that. Um, let's go put all the hydrogens. 
Okay, so what is a chain isomer? They're speaking about a lot of isomers in this question. So chain isomer is where it's the same molecule, so it's also going to be an alkane, and all we're going to do is change the chain. So you see how here we have four carbons. What if we did this? What if we, and then what if we put one of the carbons there? Now, if I go put hydrogens everywhere, then what you would notice is we're still going to have four carbons, four carbons, and if you had to go count all the hydrogens, you would see that there's 10 in both, but they are slightly different. So these are called chain isomers. Why do we call it chain isomers? It's because the chain is different. So here it's four, here it's three. So the length of the chain is different. That is chain isomerism. And so they said, what is the structural formula? Well, there it is over there. For compound F, okay, so look at compound F. It looks like it's just a haloalkane. Uh, write down the homologous series. So homologous series is like, is it an alcohol, alkene, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, ester, ketone? Well, it's a haloalkane. Halo alkane. And what is its IUPAC name? Okay, so... Let's go draw this out a little bit better. So it's got a CH3, okay? Then it's got a CH2, but then there's two of those. So that's just like this, and then another one. And then it's got a CH with a BR on it. So it's got a C with a H and a BR on it. Obviously these are all H's. Let's draw this a bit better, okay? And then we've got a CH2. They're just drawing it really weirdly, guys, but you can just draw it in a straight line. Then there's another C with a BR and a H, then there's a CH2, and then there's a CH3. So we're definitely just gonna name it from the right hand side because the only, you see the only branches is this and this, and we always wanna get the branch numbers as low as possible. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon molecule, which is oct, and then the branches are on carbon number three and carbon number five. So you're gonna say on carbon number three and on carbon number five, there is a bromo, but you're gonna say dibromo because there's two of them. So that is the molecule over there. Okay, and this question, write a balanced chemical equation using molecular formula for the combustion of A. Okay, so combustion is a very easy one. It's the one where we have to react it with oxygen and the products will always be carbon dioxide and water. So this is a four carbon and it's got 10 hydrogens. Then you're gonna say plus oxygen and then the products will always be CO2 and water. So I've always told you, number one, balance the carbon. So here we have four, so that means we're gonna put a four over there. Step two, balance the hydrogens. So on this side we have 10. That means over here we're going to put a 5 so that there's also 10 over here. And then lastly, balance the oxygens. But first look on this side. So here we can see there's a 4 with a 2. So that means there's 8 oxygens over here. And then 5, meaning there's 5 over here. So there's a total of 13 oxygens on this side. So we also need 13 oxygens on this side. So the way that you do that is you then just say 13 over two because 13 over two multiplied by two, the twos would cancel and then you would just have 13. But now you can't leave your answer with a fraction. So what we now do is we multiply everything by two. So it becomes two C4H10 plus 13 oxygens gives us this multiplied by two would become eight and this multiplied by two would become 10 like that. And there would be a perfectly balanced equation.